Dragilor, bine ați venit la un nou episod Vorbește Enologul. Aceste dialoguri sunt susținute de Biosystem România, iar eu mă aflu astăzi în dealul mare, la o cramă frumoasă, cu oameni fain, dar mai ales cu vinuri bune, și în următoarele minute, împreună sau alături de invitații mei de astăzi, o să vorbim despre enolog, vinuri faine și câteva, zic eu, trenduri de ce nu. Iar acum o să trec la limba engleză pentru că unul dintre invitații mei vorbește limba română, dar nu atât de bine încât să continuăm în limba română. Dragilor, dears, Steven Domnului and Sherban Gheorghiu, two winemakers, famous already in Romania, I would say, after the success and awards that your wine received. And I remember so nicely the event Black and White, where you had such a nice um, um, complicity, I would say, that I said, this interview should necessarily be together. I mean, I must have both of you uh, in order to answer to my questions, but I think to um, some thoughts that the wine lovers, the lovers of your wines, should have. Stephen? Yeah, that's true. I mean, for me, uh, winemaking has always been a passion uh, since a very early age. And when I first came to Romania, it was like a new world for me. It was different because I'd been making wines internationally all over the world. And to come to Romania was something different. Um, I wouldn't say it was easy, but I saw something here that made me want to stay and to make the wines the best as I can. You are born in? I'm born in the UK. Mm -hmm. So I'm, uh, I'm actually born in the northeast of England, so I'm born on the Scottish border. Uh, we don't have wine there yet, but it could be with a global warming, it could be there. I started off at a very early age of 10 years old. I was making wines from elderberries and uh, gooseberries and with my father and making home wines, you know. And uh, I won a lot of awards in local shows, but my father took the name and I was the winemaker. And uh, this is how I started in winemaking. How come Romania? It's a long story, but um, I was working for a British company and they wanted, we were working in actually Hungary at the time, and we couldn't find good quality red wine in Hungary in, the, in, in that time. In 95, there was no good red wines made in Hungary. And we decided to come to Romania to see what was here. And uh, we were surprised at the quality we saw. Sherban, when did you meet for the first time Oh, Stephen, I met a long time ago, I think, in 1998. So, you were in 95, uh, uh, No, I, uh, the story with Budureasca started in 2008, mm -hmm. actually. But I know Stephen from before. He was uh, running on the fields after grapes, I remember, in, uh, uh, at our neighbors. So, he was buying grapes all down on that time. I was a manager of the vineyard, and uh, he was coming to check the, the, the grapes. I remember... Like yesterday, he was coming with a spray, a blue one, and was painting, painting the posts to say, mine. <laughs> you know, before we started, um, Stephen, Shabbat was, uh, was not here yet, and uh, Stephen is the head winemaking here of, uh, of uh, Budureasca, and he said so nicely that I transfer all my knowledge to Sherban for the past 30 years, so I have so much trust in um, expertise and how Sherban is doing his um, his work here at uh, Budureasca. But what about you, Sherban? What can you say about Stephen? <laughs> I'll, I'll try to be very nice, Steve, <laughs> because uh, I don't want to push me down there. <laughs> so. Um, When I came in 2008, I came in the vineyard, and uh, later uh, was a moment when Stephen said, I want to teach somebody, uh, bring somebody at the winery to teach, because uh, I won't stay forever here. Didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, because I was speaking English, how he said, uh, a bad one, 
I came, uh, but I was the best uh, in English from the company uh, <laughs> on that time, so I came at the winery. And when I came at the winery, I realized that uh, this is what I want to do. I, I met Stephen, which is a very nice person, very friendly, very, very funny. <laughs> and uh, no we understood, uh, I, we understood it. We understood each other. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I don't very, know. Very Spanish. nice uh, yeah. in time. No, wait, maybe. Okay, <laughs> and uh, he's he's very handsome. Uh, yeah. He knows how to uh, treat uh, the people around. Uh. It's very easy to give knowledge, yes. um, but you need someone, someone to accept that knowledge, because um, why make is not easy. And uh, I know the schools here are very quite basic for the for their knowledge. So for me, it was great to have someone who wanted to take that information. It wasn't easy for Sherban at the beginning because I was a very tough taskmaster because quality matters. And I wanted to put into everything we do here that it's uh, little things that make the difference. So, you know, it's like, you know, um, uh, it can wait till tomorrow. No, it can't. Let's do it now. We have to make sure it's done correctly. And this is what I try to, my philosophy tried to put into actually the whole company, not just Sherban. But Sherban took it up very easily. And uh, for me, uh, I've given him sort of, well, not now, but at that time I was giving him 25 years of knowledge. So I learned from my mistakes because I made a lot of mistakes when I was younger. I made wines in California, South Africa, uh, Hungary, India all over the place, and uh, England, of course. And uh, so I learned from my mistakes. So he was actually getting the finished book virtually. So he, you know, he, he knew nothing at that time, but he learned very quickly. And now I can say, quite honestly, he can, he can do it with, without, and I can trust what he does. So it's virtually a carbon copy. Except he has his own imprint. Yeah, he has his own ideas. Yes, exactly, he has his own personality. And I appreciate that. So we discuss things, you know, if we don't like a wine, we discuss it, we try to come to some agreement, and that's how we work. Sherman, what means to be a good winemaker? First of all, to be a good winemaker, you need to, be, to have passion. This is the most important thing. If you don't like uh, wine and you don't understand the wine, you won't be a very good winemaker. Mm -hmm. And second of all uh, is the, the knowledge and to know how to, because every, every year you, you discover something different. So this is, this is the, the beauty of the job. It, it not a, every, it's not a year like others. So, so it's important to know how to resolve the problems. So you have the knowledge is, but mm -hmm. the passion I will put, uh, I will on, put the on the first, yeah. What you would add, Stephen, to passion and capacity of solving issues or challenging Challenges. That is what I love, actually. It's a, it's a solving the problems because w though I've been here since 95, every vintage has been different. And I remember each vintage. So I go through, in my mind, I know each vintage. And I know vintages from other countries. And it, every year has been different in Romania. There's never been two years the same, which is good. As a, as a winemaker, it's challenging. Sometimes it's quite tricky, but you have to resolve these problems. No matter what comes, what faces you, a good winemaker will solve the problems the best they can. And the idea is to get continuity and to give the quality so that people can enjoy a glass of wine. This is important. What is a good wine, talking about a glass of wine? What means a good wine for you? Okay, should first have a personality. So it must have fruit. For me, it must have a, a first you must smell it. You must get a great aroma. And then when you taste it, you really want to feel the grape inside the glass, and then you want to drink the whole bottle. That is a great wine. If you can finish that bottle, that my job is done. And if you want to buy it again, fantastic. So for me, this is the idea, getting repeatability to try to get people to enjoy the wine and to buy it again. This is it. And uh, for me, it's a pleasure to do that. Sherban, if you would want to give a wine as a gift to Stephen, which wine would it be? <laughs> that, uh, that is a very tricky uh, question, but uh, for Stephen, it's, uh, I would uh, give him a bottle of Pinot Noir mm -hmm. from uh, Burgundy. Cup 
Sorry. Why I'm from Budureasca? <laughs> no, no, no. In Budureasca, he, he no, can have all nice, the... No, it's very nice, but it's beautiful. I mean, I, I'm a lover of uh, Pinot Noir, especially from Burgundy. But I would stay in the... De Alumare. Yes, otherwise Monica from there. Ah! So okay, cut to... De Alumare the, and... A Pinot Noir. Martina. We need a wine from Budureasca. We know, but it's possible to give him a, a, a yes. bottle of uh, Actually, what we Actually, a make. bottle of a truce would be better. <laughs> no. Really? Really. No, okay. Uh, in so that case, in that case I, I will give him a Shiraz. Okay. So let's start Now again. we are talking. A Shiraz. Mm -hmm. in, made in Budureska, actually. Why? Because uh, um, I tasted a lot of uh, wines, and uh, I like our wines. Our wine. I was a bit... Uh, <laughs> Steven, which wine from Budureasca would you give to Sherban? All right, Sherban's a bit tricky. Uh, <laughs> but I would say, actually, a, a good Sauvignon Blanc, I think, for him. Why? Because I think um, Sherban likes that freshness and um, cleanness. He likes reds, too. But I think if he was to drink a wine, a good Sauvignon Blanc. He, he's a good, I've sort of installed into his brain yeah. Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. And this is a problem because, so yeah, because, Beautiful. yeah, because uh, we both have a passion for trying to produce great wines. When we make a wine, we don't just look at our local wines. We take wines from all over the world. We do blind tastings to see where we are in the marketplace because the market's huge, and we need to give something that people will enjoy. You know? So it's important. I see here three bottles of wines. I didn't pay too much attention when you blow the, the bottles. And I'm curious, I know this Tatiaspa Neagra. Yes. I don't know this Tamoyasa Romanească yet. Right. And here we have a very interesting wine, this one. Oh, yes, yeah. this one. Yes, which I think that I don't know any other um, winery in, Rom in Romania which uh, had this um, approach, let's say, to two grapes, I would uh, use these empty glasses to, to discover them. Yes. Right? Okay. And keep talking yes. about the uh, okay. winemaker. So, Sherban, because we are closer to the bottles, okay. would we, you be surprised? He's got this? longer arms anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I will stay. I will stay. So, the uh, Tamiasa Romanasca. So, for me, to say Tamiasa Romanasca has taken me probably 20 odd years to say the word. Probably I don't even say it correctly now. This used to be called code word Timmy, because I couldn't say Tamarasa Romanaska, so everyone knows it in the winery as Timmy. So if I say Timmy, they know exactly what to get. It's interesting. Yes, it's interesting. So. Yes. And so how, uh, what about Patasca Negra? Patasca Negra is Patasca Negra, actually, so it's okay. So no. I call it something else, but that's another day. <laughs> but anyway, um, so so Tamarasa Romanaska, I've never made it before, um, and. Uh, I thought it was uh, a great wine. When I first came, everything was sweet, of course. And Tamarasa Romanasca was sweet. We used to make it sweet. And uh, it was good. But we decided to make it dry because the potential was better for me. And so this wine is made uh, with skin contact for two days on the skins. Mm -hmm. But this particular one is unique because we've used a new piece of equipment called PSO, which is a ultrasound equipment. So with a, probably the, I think there's only uh, four or five in, in Europe. The rest is in California and New Zealand. And it uses ultrasound and it, it sends a s sound wave into the grape and breaks the skin. And it actually releases some of the aromas. So in, in the end, the result is more aromatics. More complexity? For white wines, yeah, more complexity. And for red wines, you don't get any greenness. It's more, more fruity. It's expensive. Why only four or five wineries have this? It's expensive, and, but people don't know about the technology. You know, it's, 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 a, a, it's, new. it's a new technology, yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so this is quite a nice one. Um, when I first tasted Tamarasa Romanaske, it reminded me of Gewürztraminer. You know, um, and I thought, wow, this is a great wine. It's so elegant. Yes, very what elegant. What is the specialty of Tamoyasa? 
But the other one is the finesse. You get a lot more uh, lemon zest, a mm. uh, lot more zesty aromas. 2023. Do you see the potential, the aging potential on this one? Um, I would say about three? probably two or three years, no more. And it's the first vintage? First vintage of the sign, yes. It is released, this wine, in the market, or is new? It's new on the market, this one, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Sherban, what can you say about this Tilmui Rasa Romanesco, about the sign? So it's under the, the sign brand, we, where, where we put uh, uh, very high quality wines, and uh, the sign, a very strong name, uh, uh, reflects the fact that the wines are very, very good and uh, reflects the, the pure uh, uh, characteristic of every variety we put there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, if we talk about the Mânesa Românească, the Mânesa Românească, it's a, uh, it's a, for this particular vintage is, is beautiful, it's exactly like you taste the berry in the, in the field, it reflects exactly the purity of the, of the, of the grape. It's coming from a very old vineyard also. Which uh, it's the, uh, 69 the... years old. It's a little bit older than me. Yeah, it's very old vineyard, and uh, <laughs> so so it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, tamuiasa romanesca, which is uh, the pure one. How old, many bottles of this? Uh, generally, we make uh, uh, 10,000 bottles only. Two thousand twenty-three. How is going to be two thousand twenty-four? Second edition of the sign. Uh, uh, it won't be the same. I can I can say that mm -hmm. um, quite honestly, um, because it's a different year, and people must understand vintages are different, and therefore they reflect a different characteristic of the year, um, and it's our job to try to make it similar but it'll be slightly different. Um, more challenging this year because of the big alcohols, a lot of sun, but uh, should be pretty close, I hope. Should be pretty close, but it'll be slight, there'll be some slight differences, yes. I must share with our audience the fact that um, before we started this dialogue, I asked Stephen, how is the harvest 2024? And he said, is the year, is the harvest of a winemaker, because if you have a good winemaker or a very good winemaker, you will have very good wine. Can you please say some more details on this direction, please? Well, you know, um, w winemakers generally say the, the, the wine is made in the vineyard, which is true. Uh, if you have good grapes, you can make good wine. Okay, if you're not a very good winemaker, you can make from good grapes terrible wine. But the idea is that when it's a tr challenging year, where this year was a bit challenging because very hot, the grapes ripen very fast, and we have to adapt to this uh, scenario now, um, we have to make some different changes. So we have to um, pick earlier, we have to um, treat the wines a little bit different, use different yeasts maybe to, to get the same result. So the winemaker has to work more, yeah, and our work hasn't started yet. We wait till after fermentation, that's when we really have to start to work, to balance the wines, to make them uh, perfect, you know. It, it's hard, but it's a challenge and we like that. Talking about the challenges, it's more difficult to produce a Tumuyasa Romaniasco or a Fetasca Negra? I would say Fetasca Negra, yes. Because Fatasca Negra has never been uh, a very easy grape. Um, so, so when I started to make Fatasca Negra, I never came across Fatasca Negra until um, I started with Budarasca. It, and um, some years it was pale in color, but very fruity. Some years it was boring and flat. Um, I, I, I treat every wine, I must admit, I treat every wine like a person or a child or um, so each one has its own personality so therefore I treat it like a person so this is a lady so there's a very young lady who's a bit moody sometimes and you have to to uh, make sure she's happy and 
it's, it's hard, it's not easy. So on good years, she's very good, and on bad years, she's very bad. So we used to say one in five years was good for Patasca Negra here in, in the De La Marge. But now, because the global warming's happened, she, it's easier to manage a little bit more because you've got that ripeness, you're getting a little bit more riper fruit. Um, uh, it's less complicated than before. Um, because before, we, the, we used to have a temperate climate, so it was colder, summers, um, wetter, and now it's quite hot, so she's enjoying it a bit more. She likes a good suntan, that's for sure. But um, yeah, we're, the wines are improving also because the vines are getting older also. When I first started in Budrasco, the young vines, uh, they're only a few years old. Now the vines are older, they're getting, the roots are getting deeper, and they're producing better wines. And we used to be known for better whites than we are red, and now I think the reds are coming above the whites. Well, I think that it's a nice balance between the whites and the reds. Of course, when we are talking about the Pinet, yes. or the Sauvignon Blanc, for sure, it's probably for a few of the wines that came immediately the mind of the wine lovers. Together with the Syrah, beautiful as well, and noble part as well. But right now, I have in front of me the Seminoasa Romanasco, which is beautiful. This Patasca Neagra, every time that I'm tasting, it's better and better and more impressive yes. in terms of, again, this elegance, it's, I, I would say, like a pure rouge, you know? Yes. You can Exactly. You can recognize in each of your wines, but having in the Patasca Negra, which I consider to be the most relevant grape, local grape, when it comes to international visibility, it's even better, I would say. For sure, Semiosa Romanesca, probably because of the, um, the fact that not all the wine regions in Romania can deliver quality in terms of a Samoyasa Romanesca probably is not as famous as is Petasca Regala, for example, yeah, sure. or Petasca Alba, or in this case, Petasca Negra. But Samoyasa Romanesca is there the same level in terms of quality, potential, and, uh, and success. Can you say a few words about the wild Petasca Negra and why wild okay. for those who are Okay, because me and Sherban discussed to try to bring to, to try to show what a true Patasca Negro is like. So this is, I would call it a naked one. There's no oak here. Mm -hmm. It's wild because the fermentation is natural yeast from the vineyard itself. So the yeast comes from the vineyard. Uh, malolactic is wild. So all the fermentations, the both fermentations are totally wild. So there's no inoculations. All we do is manage the tannins, and we uh, keep it as pure as possible. So this, is, I would say, is a pure, undulterated Patasca Negra. Sherban, <laughs> what can you say about the Patasca Negra? You know, I'm, I was thinking, if I need to choose between a wild Patasca Negra and a signed Camiosa Romanesco, life becomes difficult. Yeah. To be much easy, take both. <laughs> but if you have one bottle to give as a gift, as I asked earlier, which one? You know, first one and, uh, and after the other. So just you know. <laughs> depends what you're having for dinner. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> depends uh, if you go for a, a meat or some, uh, or a, a meal with meat. You take the red. I, I agree. So with it's easy. It's, it's easy to. It's, it's easy to choose, but it's impossible to select exactly. in uh, taking into consideration only the quality of both yeah, wines. Yeah, in that case, yes, it's very exactly. hard. What do you think about organic, natural, biodynamic, so this category of wine? We make organic wine here. Mm -hmm. and. Um, in the early days, I was a little bit skeptical because obviously uh, I'm a conventional winemaker. And uh, for me, it was a bit difficult to not put my imprint into the wine too much because, okay, I could add uh, different yeast and make that better, but I have to comply by rules. Uh, I don't like rules in a way because 
winemaking is not made by rules. It's a, it's a natural thing. You have to go with your instincts. But um, in the early days, I think um, I wasn't very impressed. I was actually horrified at what we were producing. But now, we've learned a lot from, from time, and the vines have got better. And now we're making some nice uh, organic reds, especially some organic reds, and also some good Chardonnay is organic, is very good. And we're winning some awards, so it's showing that we've got there somewhat. What do you think about the trends? Do you think that the consumer will go for organic more and more, or in the end, it's important the quality? You know, the problem is, uh, I've been in the wine industry now 35 years, so I've seen all the trends, starting from California with white Zinfandel, uh, Chardonnay, of course, um, uh, non-oak Chardonnays, and so on. And I think it's just like rosé now is starting to drop a little bit. It's a trend. I mean, people want to be healthier, eat healthier. Uh, organic wine is a way to go forward. You know, there's less um, uh, additives in it. There's less, um, there's no pesticides or it's just basic natural products. Uh, people want to be healthy. And I think it's important to know where your food or your drinks come from. It's important that. Um, as a winemaker, it's more challenging because we, you know, I could add something to that to make it even better, you know, and I can't. That's frustrating, but if people are happy with what they drink, I'm happy for them, you know, so it's important. We have to, we have to know what the consumer wants. The consumer are what makes this company. So if we don't listen to the consumer, we have no sales. So for us, feedback is very important. Definitely. In the, in the end, I cannot not ask you some words about this <laughs> blend, amazing blend of Cabernet or Sauvignon and Sauvignon, Stephen or Sherban, who? Yeah, it it's one. Some? Well, it's one of it's my. It's uh, another uh, one of my babies. Yes, uh, it's idea. Stephen's idea. <laughs> Me, uh, Stephen. Yeah. Why? And, uh, because well, he has a lot of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> well, because first of all, uh, uh, I love New Zealand Sauvignon. So I come back to that problem. We were making good Sauvignon. Uh, the, the premium Sauvignon was very good and the origin Sauvignon was very good. Probably, I would say, um, with my hands uh, touching wood, uh, probably some of the best in Romania for Sauvignon Blanc. It's taken us a long time to get to that step, but I wanted to push it a little bit further. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to put a Cabernet Sauvignon with a, uh, with a Cabernet, um, Cabernet um, uh, uh, Sauvignon, Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc? Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cabernet Sauvignon and, and Sauvignon Blanc to put together two parts of one because actually, as you know, Cabernet Franc mm -hmm. and Cabernet S and Sauvignon Blanc are the parents of Cabernet Sauvignon. So I start to think a little bit and I thought, wouldn't that be great to make the Cabernet white and then to add to it the Sauvignon Blanc to make a more intense Sauvignon Blanc? I remember when I tasted it for, for the first time and it was such a pleasant um, surprise yes. because, first of all, I didn't taste um, before in Romania Cabernet Sauvignon with Sauvignon Blanc in, in such, a, um, such a result, let's say. Yes. And um, because you are a master of Sauvignon, you just said that you would give or you would give a bottle of Sauvignon Blanc to Sherman means that your um, focus in terms of Sauvignon Blanc is still high and will always be high. Yes. You can yes. Enter, I mean, uh, without entering in the local grapes like the Castaneagre, Tomiasso, Romiasso, which I would say that is, uh, they have a privilege stage yes. when it comes to the Romanian wine. But you know, in the early days, um, I think everyone thought it was a bit, a bit crazy because, shall um, I could say, when I worked with Sauvignon Blanc, I used to do the New Zealand haka to the tanks, you know. So um, I was a bit nuts. But this is a, the way of showing people that I really care about the wine because I'm, you know, uh, and also with certain wines, I will speak in a, a bad French accent, you know, um, because this is the way I, I want to show the personality of the wine. So I try to push it into the wines. And it works. It's kind of a bit crazy, but it, it's a thing that is a, a bit eccentric, but sometimes. Great artists need to be a bit eccentric, you know, so I won't cut off my ears, that's for sure, but 
Um, this is the way we are. So we are, we are focusing on quality all the way. And I think this is a problem. I think the market doesn't understand. I think people don't understand that Budaraska is focused on quality. I think they see maybe the bag in box and they see the, um, um, the classic range. It's good wine, sells very nice, but, but we, we, are, we are always being focused on quality. So you can taste a bag in a box, you can taste uh, our classic, and the quality is always the same, you know, good quality. This is a definition, I would say, of a good producer. Doesn't matter of the price level, the quality should be there in a low or in a high. This is always what we exactly. focused on. This was the main, main thing I said from the very beginning when I started with Budraska. This is what we should focus on. When it comes to quality, there is no compromise, and that is it. Talking about the market and the quality, almost 30 years, 95, almost 20, 25, how the consumer changed in the past 30 years from your experience in, in Romania? Well, obviously when I first came here, everything was sweet. Mm -hmm. um, and most things in this region were wild. There was no, there was no cultured yeast. There was all wild fermentation generally. Um, so for us at the very beginning to get into the market was easy. And we were obviously, uh, when, when I was working with the British company, we were focused on dry wines, but we exported all that wine to the UK. I've seen a trend, yeah, we, they started sweet. And typically what happens is as you start sweet, your palate starts to dry out. You want to try something different. Of course, people are migrating now, and they're tasting wines from all over the world, and now their palates are getting more sophisticated, which is brilliant, because it means our job becomes easier in a way, because we now can focus on people on higher quality wine. You know? So people are starting to understand this is a Sauvignon Blanc. This is a very good for Tasca Negra. This is a good Cabernet Sauvignon. But before it was difficult, you know, people were focused on they're very patriotic to their wines, you know. This is, for, I want Fatasca Negra, it's a local grape I know, Fatasca Alba, Fatasca Regala. But people are more open to different things. Hence why we bring things like Sauvignon Sauvignon or, or Noble Five or Fume, you know, things like that. And uh, how do you see? The future? Yes. The <laughs> 20 years from now on? Uh, well, 20 years from now, I'll probably be uh, laid down in the ground with a little, some flowers on my grave, I hope, some flowers. B or not, or I'm still here. Let's hope I'm still here. I'll probably be a very old man in a Zimmer frame, but... I will bring the wine. Yeah, you bring the wine to me. <laughs> and uh, we will... I will still be, <laughs> maybe... We'll, yeah, you'll still... You'll be saying, Chef Han, oh, I don't like this one very much. <laughs> mm, mm, no, no, you... More, more skin contact. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, maybe, but uh, I see the I see the future is is growing. I mean, um, the more that uh, people focus on quality, and the more people appreciate quality, the better. Um, and I think uh, the Romanians are very passionate about wine. You're passionate about everything, actually. But um, you know, you you need to keep that passion going because. The wine industry needs to grow in Romania because outside of Romania is difficult to market because, you know, I don't know, in the old days, I started in, like I say, in 95, in 96, I used to do shows. People just ignored Romanian stands and stuff. It was very frustrating for me because we had great wines, you know, but, but now people are open. They're starting to appreciate Romanian wines, and it, that's nice, and that really gives me hope that uh, in the future will be great. And that's why I stayed, you know, because I wanted to develop a brand that could um, be accepted internationally. Thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you, Sherban. I You're think welcome. that you are, you have such a good team because it's very difficult, uh, or at least is what I think, to work on a daily basis, two winemakers, to different cultures. The language, I understood that is not a barrier anymore because you are speaking Romanian, you are speaking English very well. So I think that the, the language is not an issue anymore. No. But for working for such a long time and delivering results which are growing every year, so 
the quality, the, um, the recognition, the international recognition is growing. So I think that you are an example, I would say, considering the fact that um, many or few producers in Romania are choosing consultant, which is coming and, and going back, and you have the winemaker, which is doing the daily basis activities. But you are here together and, and, and fully involved, both of you. So I think that it's a matter also of character, personality, passion, of course, it's important. But you are also very compatible, I would, um, I would say. Before I'm going to prepare the um, closure, let's say, or the ending of this uh, dialogue, what do you think about the flying consultant? Well, I used to be one. Mm -hmm. So my, my uh, trade name at that time was uh, wine troubleshooter. So I used to fly all over the place to fix problems, you know, this is the thing. Um, yeah, it's important to have a, a, a consultant, but when you fly in, for a few weeks or a few days, you can't see everything. You can't get the grips of what is in the vineyard. You don't know the problems in the wineries. You don't know everything that can happen. Um, I worked in India for a while, and that, that's like um, that's like troubleshooting on a big extreme, yeah. Because there was uh, one of my toughest jobs, and it was difficult to work there, but. Um, you need to understand everything. You need to understand the culture. You need to understand how people work. If you don't understand that, it's difficult to just fly in and say, ah, blend this, blend it. A lot of people can do that, blend it, blend it. But you don't see the finished article. You don't see it right through to the end, you know? And then eventually, if it wins award, very good. If it doesn't win award, ah, maybe something went wrong here. You didn't do this right or something like that. No, you have to take, you have to take uh, responsibility of your own work. It's important. Thank you, Sherban. Thank you, both of you. You are doing an amazing job, not only for the Dolarta, but for the Romanian wine. We try our best, anyway. Yeah. Yes, and you are, you, are, you are trying, but you succeeded. Yes. But you know, the thing is, for me, if it wasn't for the consumer and for the people who come to, to taste our wines, we would be nobody here. So I have to say thank you to all you guys who buy Budaraska wine, because without you, we're nobody. With these words, I can only say thank you for watching, watching us. If you want to find out more about Buduriaska philosophy or company, I invite you to watch the podcast uh, registered with uh, Olga Miloriu, the CEO of uh, Buduriaska. You can find it on uh, Wines of Romania YouTube channel. I invite you to visit the website, the social media of Buduriaska, to visit the winery taste here the wines as well because definitely will be they would be much they will be much tastier and, and better than any other place in the world because here are created here they have good connection with the territory as well i am marinella ardelian and i invite you also to be Supporter, supportive with the Romanian wine producers, and let's make the Romanian wine well known around the world. Thank you. <laughs>